Here are 10 words that you can add to your business English vocabulary to sound more fluent, more natural and more intelligent when you are using English in the workplace. Hi, my name is Catherine. I am a business English teacher. I work with intermediate to advanced level students and a lot of my content is focused around getting you from that intermediate level to the advanced level. If that is something you are trying to do, definitely subscribe. I post two to three videos a week and I'm sure you'll find some helpful or interesting content amongst my videos. Our first word today is interim. Interim kind of means meanwhile. It's a temporary period of time before something permanent can be set up. So the understanding is it's not a permanent solution, it's just a temporary solution whilst you find, whilst you try and discover the more permanent solution. So for example, I will cover the team leader in the interim period before the new starter arrives. The understanding here is there will be a period of time from when the old team leader leaves and when the new team leader arrives so therefore we need someone to cover this strange period where we have no team leader it's a temporary solution an interim government was set up before the country's first election now this is a very good example because the country's first election so there's currently no government or no one leading the country so a temporary government was set up until that happens, until a government can be elected. Again, the understanding is it's temporary. It's not a permanent solution. When I started writing my book, I wanted to finish within two years. As during the interim, there were many other authors writing the same book as myself. So in this context, it's used as though you are saying meanwhile. So I want to get this done before this can happen, during this time period. It can also be used to describe a company's partial financial year or business year. And the understanding is it's not the whole year. So for example, if I was to say, directors announced an interim market value of plus 15%, what I mean is we have not finished the year. So this figure could change, it could go up, it could go down. But during the period from the start of the year to the point that I am telling you this information, it is up plus 15%, the interim. So it almost has three meanings. One, meanwhile. Two, a temporary period before something permanent can be achieved. And three, a partial business year. Fiscal. Now, fiscal may sound like it's related to fish, but it's not. It's related to money and the money of a company or organization or business, the finances. We only use this as an adjective. We need to look over the fiscal policy, meaning we need to look over the finances, the money, the policies relating to profits, losses, our finances. The company will face fiscal challenges this year due to inflation and the change in management, meaning the challenges the business will face will all be related to money and finances. The long-term solution looked favorable in terms of fiscal projections. So again, the long-term outcome looks good in terms of money, in terms of finances. So it's only talking to the monetary side of a business. Accountability, accountability. Now this comes from to be accountable, to be held accountable. And it means to take responsibility for, to be held accountable is to take responsibility for, or maybe you don't take responsibility for it, but you are the person that is being found as responsible for whatever's happened. So for example, I could say, I am responsible for the loss of that sale, but I do not take accountability for my actions. Now this is quite a negative thing to say, you would never say this, but just as an example, I am the person responsible, but I don't want to take any responsibility, any accountability. I'm not saying I'm the one that did that. 
So accountability is almost like owning the fact that you did that or not owning the fact that you did that. So look at it this way. If you do something wrong or something right and you put your name to that action, you are taking accountability for the outcome, for the situation. Accountability is important these days and managers aren't often willing to create risky strategies. So here you can see managers are not willing to create risky, dangerous, high risk strategies or plans because they would then have to take accountability, responsibility for something if it went wrong. It would be their fault. He never took accountability for his mistakes, which is why the company had to let him go. Somebody keeps making mistakes and instead of saying, yes, I made that mistake and I want to learn from it, they refuse to acknowledge, refuse to admit that it was their responsibility. They were in charge of that situation. They should have allowed that situation to play out differently. So the company got rid of him. The company fired him. The CEO was held accountable for the amount of redundancies last year. So here, again, a lot of redundancies, a lot of people were fired from the company, made redundant, and the CEO was the person that everybody blamed, the person that was held responsible, they were accountable for, they created, they caused, they were the reason why people lost their jobs. Acquisition. Now, the overall meaning of acquisition is to gain or get something, acquire something. However, we can use it in a figurative and a literal way. So figurative is just a way of speaking. It's like a metaphor. Literal is realistic, it happened. Something physical. So when we use it to describe something that physically happened, a literal thing, we talk about getting, receiving. The acquisition of huge amounts of data is made a lot easier with the use of AI. The main method of acquiring food is hunting and fishing. So in both of these examples, you're physically getting something, physically taking or collecting something. We can also use it in a figurative way to mean gain or acquire or improve a skill, learn something new. Language acquisition starts at a young age. Someone's fear of new challenges can stop them acquiring new skills. So in both of these examples, what we are referring to is something you can't physically touch. So language, the ability to speak a language and the ability to learn a new skill. I would like to acquire the skill of coding. It means to get, to learn, to gain. And finally, the last meaning is to physically add something to a collection. Now, you wouldn't use this with your friends or colleagues. It's too formal. So you wouldn't say, oh, I like your earrings. Are they a recent acquisition? Or you wouldn't say, I saw you got new sneakers. Where did you acquire them? No, but if you were talking about a more formal situation, you could use it. For example, the museum has recently acquired new artifacts that have never before been seen in Europe. The business is constantly acquiring new clients and new connections. So you're gathering new clients, building a network. But again, don't use this in informal situations, use it more in formal situations. Alignment. Now the physical meaning of alignment is two things are parallel to each other, they're perfectly in line with each other. So for example, you may have a row of tables and they're all perfectly in line. You can say the tables are in alignment. But the more common way of using alignment in business English is to talk about having similar mindset or idea or outlook or plan about something that's going to happen or is happening. We need to check that the graphic designer's ideas are in alignment with our company's brand identity. So the idea of the graphic designer lines up perfectly with our brand identity. Not that one of you is this way and one of you is this way. You would be unaligned. New alignments are being formed within the business community. So people thinking the same way, 
having the same ideas, having the same plan, being in alignment, having the same goal, the same mindset. The feedback was in alignment with my experience. So the feedback I received was in line with what I imagined my experience would show. So I did an interview and they said, you can't speak very good English and I was shocked by that. The feedback they gave me was what I already knew, I was already aware of, I had the same idea. Competitive advantage. Now this is more of a phrase and maybe you can guess the meaning by the two words. Competitive, to compete, an advantage, to be better or higher or more privileged than someone else or something else. So the competitive advantage is something that puts you above your competitors, puts you above the other companies, other people, other businesses in your area in your market. So for example, I would say my competitive advantage as an English teacher is the fact that I have a background in marketing. So when I talk to my students, I'm talking from experience, not just from something I learned in a textbook. Google's competitive advantage may be the fact that people now say, Google it instead of search on the internet for it, or let me ask Google instead of let me look online. It's become a household name. Amazon's competitive advantage could be the fact that you can receive your parcel within 48 hours of ordering it. So it's very fast delivery. So a competitive advantage is something that makes you stand out compared to the other people in your industry. This can be individual or as a business as a whole. Also, side note, if you are interviewing for new jobs, it's important to know the competitive advantages of the company or business that you are applying to because they may ask in your interview, they may ask something such as who are our competitors or why do you want to work for us and you can give them their competitive advantages and give them their competitors and that will be very impressive in an interview. Negotiation or to negotiate. Now, a negotiation is a dialogue or conversation between two parties. They can be individual people or businesses or a lawyer and a business or a customer and a business, two parties that have different points of view or different opinions or are coming from different mindsets, but it's not an argument. It's how can we meet in the middle? How can we compromise? So I'll give you an example. Let's say I want to rent a new office space and the office space I'm looking at fits all of my requirements, but the office itself is made for 100 people and only has 20 parking spaces. That's not going to help my employees. That's not going to help people that are driving to work every day. Whereas from the landlord's perspective, you either want this office or you don't want this office. So we can negotiate. I can present my points, the landlord presents their points, and we meet in the middle. Maybe a reduction in price, maybe there's another property that has more parking spaces. It's one party raising their opinion, the other party raising their opinion, and agreeing on some sort of compromise, some sort of negotiation. So if at work you hear someone saying, I'm going to negotiate with the client, it doesn't always mean just talk to or discuss. It means the client doesn't think the same way I do and we need to spend time figuring out how we can resolve this. The next word I'm going to give you is business English, but you can also use it in your personal life as well. And that is scalable, scalable. Now, when we refer to growing, building, improving a business, we say to scale up or to upscale. So for example, let's say I design a new type of glasses that doesn't reflect light. That would be perfect for me. I'm constantly fighting with the light in my office so that my students can actually see my eyes. I design this product and I'm currently just selling it to friends and family. Now, if I wanted to scale up the business, I would have to find cheaper ways of manufacturing so that I can sell to a larger audience and get the glasses made quicker. So a scalable business or an idea that is scalable 
is something that can grow, has the possibility to grow, just as not scalable would be, it doesn't have the possibility to grow. So any idea you have that you think is a good idea, you can start referring to it as scalable in the future, or there are options to scale up in the future. The scalability of something, the ability for it to grow, to get bigger, to reach a wider audience, to target more customers. I'll give you a good example from my personal life. So I teach private English lessons, one-on-one -on -one English lessons. And although that is scalable, it's limited because I only have so many hours in the day. I couldn't teach 2,000 students. However, by creating a YouTube channel that is scalable because I can reach 2,000 students, I can do live classes, I can send out worksheets. There are a lot of different areas I could go down. Whereas with teaching one-on-one, -on -one, I love teaching one-on-one. -on -one. I love my private classes. I really enjoy helping my students, but I only have so many hours in the day. So unless I hired other teachers, that's not scalable. It doesn't mean it's not a good idea. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It's just not able to grow at this current point, at where it is now conception or to conceptualize. Now these of course come from the word concept which is idea, to think, to think of something, to have an idea, a new concept. The point of conception is the point that this idea was created, this new idea, this new thing, this new business, this new product. And to conceptualize is to think about how this idea is going to come about, who are we going to target, how much is the product going to cost? Where are we going to get the product made? I do want to make one point. Conception is also the point at which a, a woman gets pregnant. But of course, we're not using that in business English. But just so you know, if you ever see it used in a scientific journal or an article you read online when talking about fertility and reproduction, it's the moment that a woman becomes pregnant. Projecting or projected? Now projecting or projected is another way of saying predicting or predictive. You use them in exactly the same way. But we are typically talking about finances, financial year. We are in the process of projecting our quarterly figures. It means we are using the data and the trends that we have seen so far to guess, to estimate what this quarter will look like. The business did not achieve its projected figures, sales figures, meaning looking at the data and the trends, it was guessed that we would achieve this and we did not. If you work with data analysis, SEO, marketing, finances, the economy, anything like that, you'll see projected a lot because it's using data to guess an outcome. So that is all today. That's 10 new, maybe new words for you. I hope you learned something and I hope it was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if it was, if there's something else you want to see. If you like these videos, make sure to give me a like, give me a thumbs up. It really, really helps. I am now going to film another video, but I'm not sure about what yet. I don't have a topic in mind. So let me go and do that. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and have a fantastic week and I will see you next time. Goodbye.